Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from the Skill Builder channel and today I'm going to be fitting a tap boost from Salamander Pumps. Now it says a tap boost but actually you can use it for things like WC systems, you can use it for showers and all kinds of other things. So electric showers, if you're getting a slow flow into the electric shower then you can boost it with this little tap boost. The idea is it just goes on one pipe so it can be hot, it can be cold, you can't use it on an unvented cylinder but then why would you? Because you'd have mains pressure there. But anything that's positive head, gravity fed, coming from a tank in a loft, even via your hot water cylinder, you can fit the tap boost on and it will dramatically increase the flow. We have a chart here which tells you by how much, but you must start off with some flow because the tap boost needs to switch on and it senses the flow. And as it senses that little bit of water going through there, it will switch it on and boost that flow. So the minimum we'd be looking for, and I do urge you to measure this first of all if you've got a really slow tap like this one here which is a long way down in a utility room then just put a bucket underneath or a jug underneath and time how long it takes to fill that jug. So the figure you'll be looking for is 1.2 litres a minute. So if it's an electric shower, something like that, just check what you've actually got going through it. Then you can fit a tap boost to the supply line and it will increase the flow. It's obviously run by electricity. And if you're running it in a bathroom or anywhere like that, you have to take extra care to make sure that it's in a safe zone. The unit itself is low voltage, but it does plug in as you'll be familiar with this sort of thing into a transformer and at that end you have got 240 volts. By the way you can also use this on outside taps if you've got a really slow outside tap and you want to get a bit more pressure so you can water the vegetables or whatever then you can fit this on an outside tap but on the inside of the building not on the outside. So this is where it's going to go this is my idea and it's a little bit tight there so what I think I'll do is take that pipe out and just move it up so that we've got a bit of clearance for that. And then you can see there's a filter in one end, that's the inlet. And on the other end, there's a non-return valve, so nothing can go back. Now, if you're doing this on a mixer tap and you've, you just try to boost one side, say the cold, what you don't want is the cold pump pressure to be try to force the hot back down. In other words, going back down the hot. What you would do there is you would put it on whichever one you're going to put it on, the hot or the cold, and then you would put a non-return valve on the other pipe to save anything pushing back. So that's a very simple thing you get from the plumber's merchants. It's basically one of those, but you get it on a fitting, compression fitting, and just fit it on the pipe and it will stop any flow the wrong way, if you like. <laughs> Okay, so the compression fitting's in the box and there's a spare filter, so we keep that safe. Now it's best not to use any paste or anything like that on these because if you use any kind of jointing thing, it could end up in the filter clogging it up. So here we've got the orientation. What it's saying is you can pump upwards, the arrow's on there. You can't pump downwards. You can pump to the left or the right horizontally as I am here. Now the tap boost has been designed so that you can put copper pipe on the inlet, and there's a compression fitting here to do that, and on on the outlet you can connect directly to a flexible tap connector but you need to make sure that the unit is well supported in other words that pipe work that you put it onto needs to be well clipped so the thing won't be vibrating or flopping around so although the idea of putting that tap connector directly on there is tempting I'm a glutton for punishment I'm actually going to go copper in copper out clip it both sides and then put the flexible tap connector on. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to use a female iron, what they call a female iron, even though it's brass, female iron to copper connector. And that simply screws on the nice little fiber washer in the end there, that screws on, and then we can go copper out as well. So you don't need to do that, but I just want it to be nice and rigid and neat under there and not have anything flopping about. So that's my way of doing it. Right, so that's nice and tight, that's fine. Final bit, put the push fit adapter onto the end of the hose. So that'll be fine. They don't need that much tightening up these things because they've got a nice squashy rubber washer in there. So if I just put that on there, pushed nicely on, clips down up. 
So now that's all connected up, I can turn the water back on and then I can deal with the electric. So what they're going to do here, they're going to put a plug and socket inside this opening here, just tucked up there. They're going to get the electrician to come and run another point. So now my glamorous assistant can turn the power on. And then the flow switch knows that it's turned off. So you could use this if you had a slow filling tank, you could use it if you had a slow filling toilet. And the great thing is there, because if you've got one loo in the house and several people using it, uh, and people are sitting there waiting for the system to fill up before they can leave because it's not gonna flush, uh, then this is a great little thing because it will speed up the filling of that toilet system. So it's quite difficult to illustrate this because the pressure is varying at various times of the day. A lot of people using the water, it does drop right away. And then obviously when nobody's using it, two o'clock in the morning, you get a much better flow and much better pressure. So just to illustrate what's going on, I've printed this chart out, which you can see in the Salamander website or instructions. And what it says to you is if you put one liter a minute in, the pump will give you an extra six liters a minute and that will be, that result in seven liters as it goes up the more you put in the more you get out but the pump is doing less work because you're already putting it in and the way they do it is they govern it so you can't get any more than 11 liters out because that's the water regulations they don't want you drawing it out of neighbors supplies or anything like that but it does give you a fair share and if you've got a shower that's a bit slow that's a very significant increase now I'm just gonna go through the main points again so that you see what's going on. If you've got a gravity system, that is a tank in the loft and you're feeding a hot water cylinder, you can put this tap boost on either the hot or the cold supply. So this is for a single outlet. Don't branch out after you've gone through the tap boost and try and do too many things because you won't achieve very much at all. You can use this on a washing machine, by the way, because I know some people, when they've got low pressure, the washing machine throws up a fault code and it stops. So if you put it on the washing machine cold supply, that works very well. And I've already said that you need a minimum of 1.2 liters a minute into the tap or the cistern or the shower or whatever you're doing, because that's the way that the tap boost knows there's water running through it and switches the flow switch on. And the final thing is if you can get it just before the outlet, that is the best place to put it. I mean, normally you've got room under a sink or anywhere like that. If you've got a, a toilet system, you've got room under the toilet system. And if you've got a shower, you've normally got room in the air and cupboard or somewhere like that. So if you want to find out more about the Salamander Pumps Tap Boost, just follow the link in the description.